Hey, welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. What's going on? This your girl Tiffany coming through here live in the fact. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, Chavis. Shout out to Brother Chavis. Um, I didn't get to watch the whole entire thing, but I saw parts of it, and I think you did a good job with the presentation thus so far. Uh, so shout out to that presentation. I have to uh continue to watch the whole entire thing. But shout out to Brother Chavis. Um, if you guys have not got a chance to, you need to check out his presentation on the Dogon people on Kofi Side TV. So make sure y'all check out Kofi Side TV and check out Brother Chavis. All right. Okay. So tonight topic, we're going to talk about women in STEM. Okay. So I'm big on STEM for multiple reasons. Okay. Um, because I think it's very important for us as black people, African descended people to learn about science. And a lot of times we say that, oh, you know, the white man took our science from us. Well, if the white man took our science, wouldn't it make sense for us to study into the scientific field and find out what they done took from us? You know what I'm saying? What we done missed out? So it only made sense to go into the scientific field and study. All right. Now this lady here, and see, a lot of black women don't get credit for being involved in the STEM program. So it's a lot of information on black women that's in the STEM. Real talk. So this lady here, she was an African-American surgeon. She was an African-American surgeon, a legislator, and a teacher. Okay? Her name was Dorothy Lavina Brown. Dorothy Lavina Brown. All right, so... Yes, yeah, she was an educator. And she was a surgeon. Okay. So I want to uh, get into the information about her. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, share the channel, and also check out my other video contents that's on here. Check out all the other videos that I have done. Okay. That's, that's what I want you guys to do. Check out the video content. Uh, make sure you share the channel, like the channel. Um, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and all that great stuff. So, um, I, so far, I have did over what? How many channels have I done? Let me look that up. How many videos have I done so far? Or how many videos do I have? Rather. Let's see. I have over 574 videos. I have over 574 videos, right? And most of those videos uh, come from, you know, when I started up actually doing my YouTube channel on history and, you know, African history and science and stuff like that. Okay. So um, I, I had got my YouTube page actually started in 2020. I started up in 2020, and here I am in 2022. So it'll be almost two years that I was consistent on my own YouTube channel, you know. So I had some videos that was uh from earlier, you know, previously. But, you know, those videos just like me filming stuff and things like that. But I didn't really start actually getting into doing my channel until 2020, all right? But I want to thank everybody that has been very supportive, that has been checking out my channel, subscribing to my channel from day one, those who has been uh, hitting the notification bell. I really thank you guys for that. That really means a lot to me. Uh, for those who come in and give their commentaries, the positive and the negatives, I want to thank everybody for that. Um, although I am going through a lot of ups and downs right about now. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, dealing with some personal life situation, you know, working and all of that. And also <laughs> had to leave an old team behind, <laughs> an old group behind, and had to put more focus into what I'm doing. So with that being said, I am grateful and I am thankful for everybody that has been tuning in, watching me and supporting my channel from the beginning. Um, I usually don't get a lot of uh, views on here, which I'm okay with that. And um, I don't get a lot of people watching that much, but 
again for the, and some of the videos i do got a lot of views depends on who the subject is and who the person i'm talking about so i tend to get a lot of views on some subject matters and certain ones i don't get a lot of views on and i'm okay and i'm absolutely fine with that so thank y'all so much um I'm going to go ahead and get started. And there's some more that I want to talk about at the very end. But let me just go ahead and continue on with this video, okay? So who was Dorothy Lavina Brown? Who was, who was she? And what did she do? What did she do? Okay. All right. So let's go to the Wikipedia source. Okay. Let's see what Wikipedia guys say about her first. All right. So here's the information here on Wikipedia. So Dorothy Lavina Brown, right? She was born January the 7th, 1914, and she died June the 13th, 2004. All right. She was also known as Dr. D. And she was an African American surgeon, a legislator, and teacher. She was the first female surgeon of African American ancestry from the Southeastern United States. She was also the first African American female to serve in the Tennessee. General Assembly as she was elected to the Tennessee House of Representatives. While serving in the House of Representatives, Brown fought for women's rights and for the rights of people of color. Okay. So she was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and was surrendered to the Troy Orphan Asylum and Orphanage in Troy, New York at five months old by her mother, Edna Brown. Dorothy lived at the orphanage until the age of 12 there were multiple factors that inspired brown to pursue a career in surgery the care she received during the, her tessa tessa and a performance that she watched that made her wanting to do something to make other african americans proud all right so it says although her mother tried to persuade dorothy to live with her again Brown ran away five times, returned to the Troy Orphanage each time. At the age of 15, Brown ran away to enroll at Troy High School. The principal at Troy High School found out that Brown was homeless and he arranged for her to be taken in by Lola and Samuel Wesley Redman. She worked as a mother's helper in the house of Mrs. W.F. Jarrett in Albany, New York, which was just across the Hudson River. When she was 15, she worked at a self-service laundry. Okay. So as you can see, um, Dr. D had a very difficult life. So she was given up for adoption, given over to the state. Well, not the state of New York, but the, I mean, not the state of Pennsylvania, but, uh, but the state of New York. She was given over to the state of New York at the age of five months. So her mother gave her up. And it doesn't really talk about her father. Okay. So, all right. So she came from a very, very, very poor background. She was very poor. Um, she, she eventually got adopted. Okay. After it was discovered that she was homeless. All right. But let's go ahead and continue. So she began working as an inspector at the Rochester Army Ordnance Department in Rochester, New York. In 1944, Brown was admitted to study medicine at Meharry Medical College, a historically black college in Nashville. She completed her internship at the Harlem Hospital in New York City. After graduating in 1948 in the top third of her class, Brown became a resident at Herbert Hospital of Meharry in 1949. Despite local opposition to training female surgeons, she had gained approval from the chief surgeon, Matthew Walker, Sr., M.D. Brown completed her residency in 1954. All right. So then it goes on to say that she started off her career, helped as a doctor in World War II. She worked as an inspector in the Rochester Army Ordnance Department. Okay, she was a chief surgeon at the now defunct Riverside Hospital in Nashville from 1957 to 1983. In 1966, she became the first African-American female to be elected to the Tennessee General Assembly, which is now also known as also the Tennessee State Legislature, right? 
a position that she held for two years. She almost succeeded in having abortions legalized in cases of rape or incest and in expanding the already existing legally permitted abortion in cases when the mother's life was in danger. During her career as a politician, Brown also became involved in the passing of the Negro History Act, which required public schools in Tennessee to conduct special programs during Negro History Week to recognize accomplishment made by African Americans. All right. So after her work in World War II, she entered medical school at Meharry Medical College in Nashville, Tennessee. Dr. Brown then did a one-year internship at Harlem Hospital, and next she completed a five-year residency in general surgery at Meharry and Herbert Hospital. In 1959, she became the first black female surgeon to become a fellow of the American College of Surgeons. All right. Okay, so in 1968, Brown tried to obtain a seat in the Tennessee Senate, but lost in part due to her support for abortion laws. In 1968, following her departure from politics, Brown returned to become a full-time physician at the Riverside Hospital. Brown also acted as an attending surgeon at the George W. Herbert and General Hospital as a director of education for the clinical rotation program of the Riverside and Meharry Hospital. She was also a surgery professor at the Meharry Medical College and consulted for National Institutes of Health in the in the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. All right, so after losing her run for a seat in the Tennessee Senate, Brown served on the Joint Committee on Opportunities for Women in Medicine, sponsored by the American Medical Association, along with Support Women in Medicine. Brown also had a major influence in the fight for the rights of people of colors and was a long was a lifelong member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. So, in 1956. Brown agreed to adopt a female child from an unmarried patient at Riverside's hospital. The patient came to Brown while still pregnant and asked her to adopt her child. Brown agreed because she wanted a child and she knew that a chance like this would most likely never, never come again. Brown became the first known single female in Tennessee to le legally adopt a child whom she named Lola Denise Brown in honor of her foster mother. She later adopted a son named Kevin. Brown was a member of the United Methodist Church. Okay. So she uh, wrote an autobiography, essays, and inspirational guides. And it says uh, she became the third woman to, in 1958, she became the third woman to become a fellow of the American College of Surgeons, the first African American to be elected. In 1971, Dorothy L. Brown's Women Residency a Meharry Medical College. Nashville was named after her. She also received honorary doctorate degrees from the Russell Sage College in Troy, New York, and also from Bennett College in Greensboro, North Carolina. In particular, she received her honorary degrees in the, humanitary, the, the humanities from Bennett College and Cumberland University. Brown was a member of the Board of Trustees at Bennett College and of the Delta Sigma Theta sorority. She participated as a speaker on the panels that discussed scientific, religious, medical, and political issues. Brown was also awarded the Horatio Alger Award in 1994 and the Carnegie Foundation Humanitarians Award in 1993 because Dorothy Lavina Brown had accomplished so much in her career as a surgeon, she was a very sought after public speaker, both nationally and internationally. So in 2004, unfortunately, she died of congestive heart failure in Nashville, Tennessee. And she was 90 years old. Okay. So she lived a long life. Okay. So these are the references at the bottom of the page. Okay. I always make sure that I provide the references at the bottom. So you guys can always look it up for yourselves. Double check. Always check your sources and make sure they have references at the bottom. If they don't have references, nine times out of ten, you can't really rely too much on it. So when you use Wikipedia, you always want to look for references at the bottom of the page. And that's important. Okay. Okay, so... All right, so right here, here's an article. 
which is called the Journal of Nuffield Department of Surgical Sciences. Okay, it says, you're a girl, you're black, you're poor. Dorothy Lavina Brown, Challenging Inequality in Surgery by Susiana M. Black and Habatula Abogasim. Okay. So here it goes into the background. Um, well, here's the introduction. So it says, the face of surgery is changing from a predominantly white male specialty. We now see more non-white, non-male medical students choosing surgery and being supported in this specialty. The surgical workplace is starting to recognize the need to offer more equal opportunities. One African-American woman who was at the forefront of this process was Dorothy Lavina Brown. She fought to show girls that they could achieve whatever they set out to do and that surgery was a possible career for them. All right. And it says a beacon of strength within the specialty. Dorothy Lavina Brown was an estimable African-American surgeon, educated and advocate for children's services, health care and social justice. She worked throughout her career for rights for women and people of color, trying in her own words to not hard, not I mean, try, excuse me, trying in her own words to be not hard, but durable. It is even now an often thought misconception that to survive within a sur within surgery, a woman must become harsh and hardened to those around her. I think Brown tried to show that this was not or should not be the case. Okay. So it goes into a little bit of background. Again, she was born as an orphanage in Philadelphia, right? When she was she was given up when she was five months old. Okay. And um, it says Dorothy's troublesome relationship with her mother led her to run away multiple times. She remembered her mother telling her that she had had enough education now and that she should do like the other color girls do in Troy. She went into domestic work as was expected of other African-American girls. At her, I mean, yeah, African-American girls her age at the time. One on one occasion, she ran away with the sole purpose of enrolling in high school to pursue her dream of becoming a surgeon. Brown was taken in by a foster family, the Redmonds, who brought her up with no other expectation than to simply stay in school and work hard. In her latter, in her later interview for the Horatio Alger Award, she said she had been told, "You're a girl, you're black, and you're poor, and it just can't be done." Brown didn't pay that any attention. I just kept on going, dreaming my dream. I was going, going to be a doctor, and I was going to be a cut cutting doctor. That's what Brown did. Okay? So imagine being told that because you're poor, you're a female, and you're black, that you're not going to get any, you're not going to pursue your goals. You're not going to pursue or do well in the STEM program. Imagine someone telling you that, especially your own mother. Especially, imagine your own mother tell you that you need to not go to school, drop out of school, and just work. So she went against the odds. Yes, she was black. Yes, she was a female, and she was poor. But she pushed herself to the limits. And she, somebody gave her a chance. See, when we deal with life, life is based on chances, okay? Life is based on chances. It doesn't always mean that everything's going to be absolute. So there's chances, all right? So for her, it was based on the chance that was given to her, the opportunity that was given during that time when segregation was at an all-time high, when it was hard for black people to get into a surgery field, when it was hard for women to get in those type of field. She was given that chance. Let me see. And Chavis put, bet her life would have made a good movie. Oh, absolutely. It would have. They just need somebody who can do a documentary. It'll be a great movie. You know, it'll be a great movie and great inspiration to all the other women that are in the STEM program. And it says her situation motivated her to break the cycle. Yes, it did. Yes, it was a motivation for her. Absolutely. Okay, so 
Let's see what else. Um, all right, so going down, it says helping to establish African American women in surgical profession was the only part of Brown's incredible legacy. She pursued her political interests with the same determination, right? Okay. So it says in 1966, she saw an opportunity to become involved in politics and was elected to the Tennessee General Assembly for two years. She was the first African-American woman to serve in this position. Incredibly, she fought to have an abortion legalized in the case of rape or incest and to extend the circumstances in which abortion was allowed in the case of danger to the mother's life. Sadly, she lost, but by a mere two votes. Bearing in mind, abortion in states wasn't legalized until the landmark of 1973 Roe versus Wade Supreme Court ruling. This again demonstrated her re resolve to push for whatever she believed in, despite being told it wasn't the the done thing. Brown also assisted in passing the Negro History Act to require schools in Tennessee to recognize accomplishment made by African Americans. And unfortunately, she wasn't then to be able to obtain a seat in the Tennessee Senate due to her previous public support for abortion legalization during her time in the General Assembly. The new public awareness of the issue of abortion and the support she garnered was not only incredible, but will have been a significant step towards the law and eventually changes seven years later. Recognition. So, uh, said Dorothy Lavina Brown was proud to be a role model. She wanted to say to young people that it can be done, and her achievements were recognized in a number of ways throughout and after her career. Okay, so Again, a female residence at the Meharry Medical School was named after her in 1970. And later, she was awarded the Humanitarian Award by the Carnegie Foundation and Horatio Alger Award. Right. And that was in 1993. And 1994, respectively. So upon her death, Dr. John Mopin, the president of Meharry Medical College, commented that America has lost one of its greatest force in medicine and that Dr. Dorothy Lavina Brown opened doors previously closed to females and people of color. In 2017, she was post posthumously inducted into the Tennessee Healthcare Hall of Fame. Legacy, striving for better access for BAME women. D.L. Brown has accomplished in all inspiring numbers of first and in so in so doing, she encouraged others who face inequality throughout their career to follow in her footsteps. Okay. Well, today, many Black, Asian, and minority ethnic women are still discouraged from pursuing surgery as a career. The playing field is leveling, and all of these pioneering females struggling to change uh, antiquate attitudes have paved the way for others to enter the field. And a 2021 review identified the many causative factors as harassment, insufficient support, negative perception, lower levels of respect, male-dominated culture, right? Exclusion, conformity to societal pressure and societal pressure, higher expectations, stereotypes, work-life balance. It is, however, an outdated view that surgery isn't a place for women or BAME doctors. And it says data from the Surgical Infection Society show female representation in surgery in the U.S. increased from 15% in 2005 to 24% in 2017. However, we continue to see catastrophic underrepresentation of women in leadership roles. This perpetuates the issue of younger women seeing surgery as a whole as inaccessible. Women currently make up more than half of medical graduates but are less likely to enter surgical training. If they do so, they are more likely to drop out or earn less than their male counterparts. 32% of sur surgical trainees in 2017 were women. Only 13% of UK consultant surgeons are female. All right. <clears throat> and it says, when it comes to BAME women, these gender disparities also intersect with matters of race. A BMA survey found that 45% of BAME doctors within 
the NHS do not feel a respect for diversity or a workplace culture of inclusion. This is compared to 75% of white doctors who do feel respected and included. This lack of respect and equal opportunity is likely to have wide ranging effects on access to surgical careers, further compounding the lack of diversity in the highest position. All right. In the UK in 2016, at consulting level, it was found that ethnic minority doctors are less likely to be shortlisted for posts and less likely to be offered the position than white doctors. Despite applying for more position than their white counterparts in 2020, there was a marked lack of diversity within surgical leadership. The impact of this uh, was it. Pasanti, if I'm saying the right, Pasanti of representation, particularly in position of seniority, cannot be underestimated when considering how to improve access of non-white women to surgical careers. Seeing people you relate to in top position has an undeniable impact on what you perceive to be achievable for yourself. So Dorothy Lavina Brown's role, model, and achievements demonstrated that there should be no limit on the aspiration of BAME, which is Black, Asian, Minority, hold on. Yeah, which is Black, Asian, Minority, Ethnic Women. Okay, that's what BAME stands for. Right, so again, going back, it said Dorothy Lavina Brown's role model and achievement demonstrated that there should be no there should be no limit on the aspiration of bang women within surgery. This is the legacy that she leaves behind. Okay. So these are the references again at the bottom of the page. And this comes from the journal of Nuffield department of surgical, surgical sciences. Okay. And this came out straight out of university of Oxford in the UK. Okay. All right. So that's her. That's a picture of her. Okay. All righty. All right. So now I have a book that I want you guys to check out. All right. So this book right here. And you can go to. And you can go to archive.org. It is called Black Women Scientists in the United States. All right. Okay. All right, so what other information can we find in this book? So this book was written by Winnie Warren. Okay, so it's a list of Black African-American women scientists. So in this book, you will see Dorothy Lavina Brown, From Orphan to Surgeon to Teacher, right? Now, let's see what other information I can find in here that wasn't found in Wikipedia or the other article that I just read. Okay, so down here it says, it says Brown has been a strong supporter of historically black colleges and universities, which she viewed as having been threatened by desegregation. We still need Meharry Medical College and we still need Howard University. She said in a 1986 interview, why should we throw away our heritage? In 1982, the Board of Education of the United Methodist Church produce a film on Brown's life, Run to Live, a day in the life of Dr. D. Brown. So they did come out with a film of Chavis, if you're still around. It's called Run to Live, a day in the life of Dr. D. Brown. And it says the film continued to be shown at fundraisers for 12 historically black colleges and universities maintained by the church. 
Okay. Brown has said that her basic philosophy of life encompasses the belief that we are here for a purpose. Each of us being endowed with multiple talent talents, our charge is to develop one or as many of these talents as possible and to use these talents in the days of our living to glorify God. Therefore, I must run to live and I must seek to serve in as many different areas of endeavor as I can. And it goes on to say, Brown believes that surgery in a natural is a natural field for women because after all, they do the cutting and sewing at home. And that lack of opportunity could be overcome by the motivation and the will to do what you want to do. Although no one ever encouraged her to become a doctor when she was a youngster, Brown said no one actually said I couldn't do it because I was black, a woman, and poor. All right. Okay, then. So that's that information. Um, again, the title of this book is called um, Black Women Scientists in the United States by Winnie Warren. Black Women Scientists in the United States by Winnie Warren. All right. Okay, then. So, yes, you can go check it out on archive.org. Let me check. Let me uh, type it up for you. That's the website you can, you can go. You can find all type of books on there. Just type in the books that you're looking for, and most of it they have on here. Okay? All right. And um, also, what was I going to say? Okay, yeah, the documentary is called Run to Live. So look up Run to Live. Let me see if I can find it for you. Hmm. Okay, so let's see. I'm trying to find it up here. Maybe they don't have it on here. But um let me look it up. Okay, run to live. Let me uh, highlight this. Run to live. Hmm. Okay, so I don't hmm. Okay, so it's the last thing it says the film continues to be shown at a fundraiser for 12 historically black colleges and universities maintained by the church. Okay, so it's probably just not in the opening, like for the public view, because um it's only being shown at the historically black colleges for fundraisers. So I don't see where they have it for like 
uh, the public to um, let's see. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, they don't have it for the public. I don't think it's not on here, so I can't find it on Google. But, but anyways, um, but yeah, you can go on archive.org and you can look up some books and information, like any books that you look really looking for. You can find it on archive.org, so uh, you can go on there. So it's no problem. All right. All right, so with that being said, um, thank you guys for tuning in and watching. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, thank you all for subscribing to my channel. Hit the notification bell. And I'll be looking to have more people on the platform pretty soon, so uh, be on the lookout for that. So if you guys are interested in being on the platform and having a conversation or discussion with me, just reach out to me on Facebook if you have my Facebook account or if you don't have my Facebook account, check me out on Instagram. My Instagram is Eastside Tilt. All right. So I'm going to put up my IG for those of you who don't follow me on IG. It's E Side Tilt. Okay. My old Instagram page then got hacked. So just add that IG, Eastside Tilt. Okay. So if you guys want me to be on your platform or you want to come on my platform, Make sure you reach out. Um, also, I have a Twitter page. Okay, which is French89. So that's my Twitter page, French89. I, do, I really don't be on there. And then I have another Facebook page. Uh, my other Facebook page is... That's my other Facebook page. Uh, you can check me out right there. It's in the comment section. So, you know, make sure you guys add my Facebook page, my Twitter, and my uh, IG account. So, if you guys haven't reached out. And also, if you got Clubhouse, I'm also on Clubhouse. So, my Clubhouse info, I got to look it up. Shoot, Lord have mercy. Let me uh, find my clubhouse information. Okay, so my clubhouse is at Tip French. So let me put up the clubhouse. Okay. So I'm going to uh, start to get back to use clubhouse more often. I really don't be on clubhouse as much. Um, you know, because at first I was on it in the beginning, then I kind of just left because it was getting a little exhausted, you know, with the topics and conversation that is taking place. But I am looking forward to doing clubhouses more often. And um, I would like to get you guys on there as well for those of you who are on my uh, who are on my clubhouse page. So if you're not, make sure you add my clubhouse. All right. Um. So, yeah. You know, like I said, in the near future, I'm looking to have more people on the platform, do more interviews, uh, do more conversation. I want to get people that's involved in the economic fields, people that's uh, also, you know, that's involved in the scientific, the, the STEM field, people who are historians. I want to get historians on here as well. Um, also, who are black business owners in the near future. So it's a lot that I'm looking forward to. So please make sure you reach out to me if you are a historian. Uh, economist or somebody that's in the scientific field so that way you know I can have you on the platform and I can have these conversations with you have interviews or whatnot all right but other than that thank you guys for tuning in thank you so much I hope you all be safe and be careful and please do not be discouraged by individuals who don't have the best interests at heart just keep it pushing do what you gotta do you know what I'm saying? Maintain yourself. So with that being said, peace and power and elevation be to all of you. This your girl, Tiffany. And I'm logging off saying deuces. Thank y'all so much. And please be safe. All right. Until next time.
I'll talk to y'all later. All right.